So I've been working on a new project and when I shared the design with my buddy Adam, which if you don't follow Adam on YouTube, I would definitely recommend you check out his channel. He's got all kinds of great YouTube videos on Generate Press and Generate Blocks. I'll put a link down in the description. Anyways, when I was showing him this design, he came across this call to action section and asked me how I planned on actually making that work inside of Generate Press and Generate Blocks. My answer to him was, honestly, I have no clue, but I'll figure it out when I get there. Well, there is right now, so I'm gonna figure out how I can build out this section with this arrow pointing at this button and this arrow pointing at this button inside of Generate Blocks. My guess is we're gonna have to jump into a little bit of CSS, but let's dive in and take a look and see how we can get it done. I'm gonna go ahead and move this Figma file over to my other monitor for now. We'll focus on the browser, but if I need to show you other things inside that monitor, I will. So I'm gonna start here by just adding a section. I have a shortcut inside of Text Expander that actually expands out two different containers, a section with a inner container. I just keep that inside my Text Expander so it makes it really easy to add a section with all my preferences already styled in. All right, so the first thing we need to do is grab the background color. I'm just gonna go over here on the other monitor and grab the hex code. And now we'll go inside of our section here and scroll down to our backgrounds and add that background color. This is just kind of a dummy install, so I'm not gonna take the time to put all these colors into the customizer. Next thing we need is a headline. It's gonna be a H2, it's gonna be centered aligned. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy all this text and we'll paste it in here. Now we're gonna to need to change the text color to white. And we actually want this question mark to be my action color on this website, which is kind of a lime green type color. So I'm gonna grab that hex code and we'll put it here inside generate blocks under the highlight color. Now I can just highlight that question mark, go to this little drop down, and click highlight. And now we have our green question mark. Underneath that, we have another line of text, which I'm just gonna use a headline block here from generate blocks to add. We'll change it to a paragraph. We'll center align it. And this text is actually white, but semi-transparent. So to do that, I'm just gonna fudge that in here and do a white hex code. And then I'm gonna append 60 at the end, which will make it 60% trans or 40% transparent, 60% opacity. All right, underneath that, we're gonna have our two buttons. So to contain those, I'm actually gonna put those inside of a container here and change this display to flex. This way I can center align those buttons. I can also control the margin on top of them, which I'm gonna put maybe 80 pixels of top margin. And we can go ahead and add our buttons here. So we'll have our first button here that says get started. And we'll do a second button. I'm just gonna duplicate that first one and this will be learn how we work. All right, so I'm gonna style up these buttons individually here. Like I said, if this was a real project, I would go to the trouble of making global styles and all that, but really we're just trying to workshop this to see if we can get it to work. So in my design, I have a semi-transparent white background with white text. I think on hover, we can just go to a full white background with dark text. That works perfect. And here for the get started button, I need to grab my green color again. So I'll go ahead and grab that from off screen. I'll paste in that hex code for the background color and maybe on hover, we'll make it just slightly lighter. And for our text, we want to have a dark text color so we have enough contrast there. Now, lastly, since this container I put these buttons in is flex, I can use gap to give a little bit of space in between these two buttons. We'll say maybe 16 pixels. So just like that, we have the basics of our CTA section all set up. And what we're gonna have to do next is figure out how we get those arrows in place. Now, what my thought is, is we're going to add a class to this button and a class to this button, and we'll use a pseudo element for our left arrow and a pseudo element on this button for our right arrow. So I think that's the direction we're gonna try first. Now, I am gonna probably make my arrows extra long and then use this section to turn the overflow to hidden so those arrows don't break out of the sections. So I'll go ahead and grab that section now, and we'll go up here to our overflow, and we'll do hidden on both the X and the Y axis. Now here on this left button, let's go ahead to our advanced. We'll scroll down to additional CSS classes and we'll call this challenge left and we'll call this one challenge right. Go ahead and save that. And we're gonna have to jump back into Figma here to prep our assets. So I'll bring this back into view and we'll go ahead and start working on this. So my thought is this arrow here to the left. I'm just gonna double click on it here and make it extra tall just to make sure if my padding isn't the same here in Figma, it will work just fine inside the builder. We'll have a little bit of extra space. 
Go ahead and click done on that. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this other arrow here. Just make it quite a bit taller. It doesn't really matter how tall we make it. Obviously, no extremes, but this should be fine just like that. Now, this is done with a stroke, and sometimes you can have some problems when you export strokes as SVGs. So I'm just gonna right click this and click outline stroke. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this other one, outline stroke. All right, so let's go ahead and export these. I'm gonna click on the first one. We'll change this to an SVG and we'll call this left arrow. And we'll go to the right one, export it as an SVG, and we'll call this right arrow. All right, with those saved, we can jump back out of Figma here and go into the back end of our install to upload those images. We'll go to media, library, add new media file, and we'll upload our two new arrows. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this here so we can copy those to the clipboard, but we'll go back to our pages and we'll open up our challenge CTA on the front end so we can jump into the customizer and write some CSS. All right, so we had a challenge left and we also had a challenge right. Just wanna put those in there so I don't forget. Now I am gonna be using absolute positioning for this. So whenever you're using absolute positioning, you need to figure out what you're going to position that relative to. So I think the easiest thing in this case is I'm gonna position the left arrow relative to the left button and the right arrow relative to the right button. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put a position of relative on both of these. Now I could combine these classes, but I think this is just fine and it'll make it very clear here inside the tutorial. So this is just make sure anything we put uh, absolute positioned inside of this is going to actually be relative to these buttons and not some other container on the website. So like I said, we're gonna do this with pseudo elements, I think. So I'm gonna do challenge left and we'll do a before pseudo element. Like I said, we're gonna do position of absolute. We'll do the content. This is actually gonna be our image. So I can go back here and we'll grab our left arrow URL and we'll pop it in here just inside some quote marks. And you can see our image is now showing up. So now we just have to figure out exactly how we're gonna position it. I know we want the bottom to be close to the bottom. We're actually probably gonna move that up a little bit, but now at least we got it on the right part of the screen. And we probably want the left to be zero as well. And then we're gonna to have to use some kind of transform to get it its whole length across. So I'm gonna do transform translate X and we'll start off with maybe negative 100%. So this gets us pretty close. I think we need a little bit of gap in between that arrow and we need to bring it up a little bit. And we can do that with just our bottom and left coordinates here. So maybe four pixels from the bottom, that's not quite it. Eight pixels, that puts us pretty close to the center. That's good enough for me. And on the left, maybe we do negative 24 pixels, and that'll give us about 24 pixels of gap in between the edge of this arrow and this button. Hey, I hate to interrupt this video, but I wanted to tell you about a brand new, exclusive, and completely free resource I put together here for my Generate Loving friends on YouTube. It's called the six essential tweaks to a perfect generate website. And it's the six tweaks that I think are most important to get the best results out of generate press and generate blocks. If you use the link down in the video description below or go to the adminbar.com forward slash generate, I'll give you instant access to all the code, insight to what I'm using it for and a full video walkthrough. All right, now let's jump back into the video. All right, so we need to do the same thing now for the right button. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this and we'll just change out what we need to. Like we need that to be right. We need to grab the right arrows URL and we'll paste it in on top of this old one. And now we need to get it positioned in the correct position. So this one, if you remember from the Figma file, this one goes to the right and down. So we need to kind of reverse all of the coordinates we had on our original one. So instead of bottom, we need top and that will bring it down and you can see they're almost lining up on top of each other we'll just work on getting that exactly on top of each other while we're here that looks pretty close 12 and a half pixels kind of a strange number but that seems to do the trick we need to change the right to 24 pixels and then we'll change the translate from negative to positive oh, we do need to change this right to negative 24 I get confused with all my negatives and positives here but now we have the left arrow coming down from the left and pointing this way and the right one over here. So next thing we need to do is just figure out exactly how we're gonna do this in responsive views. Now in this design, I haven't mocked up any tablet or 
mobile. So what I'm guessing is since these are absolutely positioned, just as this shrinks down, you're gonna see less and less of those arrows. So I think for tablet, we're probably good just as we are. We'll go ahead and preview it. And I think this design still works just fine. We see a more solid arrow pointing to the get started, which is kind of our primary call to action. And we see a lighter arrow pointing to this lighter button. Now we could go in here and write a media query to swap out these arrows and maybe do something shorter so you can still see them turning down and up, but we're getting so close with the edge of text here. Honestly, for me, this is less of a headache, so I'm gonna leave it just like that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at mobile. Here, I think we do probably need to make some tweaks. Just seeing these arrows barely poke out here, it's not really clear what they are. So for me, since these are just decorative elements and don't really add anything to the website, I say we just hide them on mobile. So let's just go ahead back here to our CSS and we're gonna change this to put all of it inside of a media query. So I'm gonna do at media and we're gonna do min width 768 pixels. Now we'll go ahead and open and close our curly brackets. We'll take that close bracket and put it at the very end here. So you can see our arrows have disappeared here now because we're saying only apply all of the CSS if the width is at least 769 pixels. So as soon as we go one pixel bigger than our mobile breakpoint, you'll see the arrows come back. Go ahead and save that. We'll take a look on the front end and jump into the inspector tool. And we'll make sure that this looks good as we resize the browser here. So like I said, those arrows just get kind of cut off and they look fine until they disappear on mobile. And I think that's pretty good, honestly. I would not complain about that. Yes, we could go in there and tweak it even further to get those arrows different sizes on different breakpoints, but for me, I think this is totally acceptable since this really is just a decorative element. I decided to create this video kind of on a whim, so I apologize for not doing any prep work ahead of time. You did see me stumble through a few different things here, but hopefully you still were able to learn something from this video and see kind of how I go through the process of trying to solve problems when I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna achieve what I'm after. If you did learn something in this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe and we'll see you then.